Hey guys, welcome back to the most anticipated and requested series on my channel, GameSense 101. In this video, we're going to cover what I believe is the most underrated aspect of your Fortnite gameplay, your movement. Yes, your movement as in pressing WASD or moving your thumbsticks on controller. I'm going to be jumping around and covering different aspects of your movement and why it's important as well as some tips and tricks, so I'll put timestamps on the screen now so that if you're looking for a specific part, you should go and skip to that, but I definitely think that you should watch the whole thing through. Right now, a lot of you are probably thinking, I know how to run fine and move when I build. How could movement be so important? And even more importantly, how does it relate to game sense? Wouldn't it be more of a mechanic? Everyone seems to overlook their movement because they think building and aiming are the only two important aspects of Fortnite, and that's where they're wrong. If you want a perfect example of why movement is so important, we can look no further than Nick Merckx. Whenever I hear PC players talk about Nick Merckx, most of the time they kind of just dismiss his building and aim and say, yeah, his positioning is really good. While positioning is a big part of his gameplay, and I have a separate Game Sense 101 video on that. What's even more impressive to me is his movement and how it's used to show off his Game Sense. Let's take a look at this clip. So it's kind of long, but we see Nick right outside of his home in Tilted Towers playing solo squads. We see him duck inside the building, come back out, get a nice shot off in his opponent. After that, he goes for a cheeky little jump shot, but his opponent builds to block it. His opponent falls down too, and Nick waits for him to window edit, knocks him down, and then cleans up another opponent who drops down right in front of him. Nick then retreats and finds more cover behind the door and patiently waits for his last opponent to come in. We see him crack him for a quick shot, then he has to reload his SMG but instead takes out his AR and connects even more shots. Then finally he secures the kill with his pump. So if you think this wasn't anything special or you didn't see anything amazing in this clip, I'll slow it down for you guys and explain each part and why his movement was the sole reason that he's alive here. First we'll look at why he went straight into the house in the beginning of the clip. Let's be real here, how many of you guys would have either followed the first guy he shot down after he jumped off or went and challenged the guy's teammate above? I would say about 75% of you guys would have done the first option and followed the other guy down and the other quarter of you, if you noticed the guy above, would have stayed and tried to challenge him. Nick sees the guy above him and knows he'll drop down and this is where the game sense part kicks in. Nick's right because the guy drops down right on top of him but has no idea where Nick is because Nick hides perfectly behind the door. Nick comes out, lands a shot, and then falls to the ground when his falling jump shot doesn't work. But here is another piece of great movement. Instead of stopping and standing there waiting for his opponent to peek and being a stationary target, we see Nick keeps moving. He sees another teammate building up onto the building, so he knows he has to get inside and kill one of the opponents quickly to make it a 2v1 instead of a 3v1. He takes a shot but shoots backwards and heads for the building. He anticipates an edit in the window and secures that knock. Again, we see how amazing his movement is here. Instead of standing and spraying through the wall to try and finish the guy he just knocked, he keeps moving until he's completely out of sight from the guy's teammate who is above him. Nick then waits for this guy to drop down and gets another easy kill. Still, even after both of these kills, he keeps moving and positions himself to the left side of the door so he can go for right hand peeks. The last opponent finally drops in and he gets a shot off with his shotgun and then abuses the right hand peek to get damage off with his AR. Then we see him run out and quite literally juke the player out by pretending to go right but coming back left. To his opponent, he sees Nick come out, and Nick's movement shows he's going behind and around to the column or pole that he's standing behind, so he focuses and waits for Nick to come out and pop on the left side. But instead, Nick jukes him out and is completely hidden behind the column and kills his opponent while his opponent has literally no clue where Nick went. That's the beauty of movement and how it can separate good players from top tier players like Nick. You can say all you want about his building, but the man's earnings in Fortnite tournaments speak for themselves. Evidently, we can see here how important your movement is, and even more importantly, how your game sense and movement are related. Now I want to get into some tips and tricks to improve upon each and how you can use them together. My first tip is a little extension on what we just saw in using your movement to confuse or misguide and juke out your enemies. What you always want to be doing in these situations is putting yourself in the enemy's shoes and predicting what they are predicting. You always want to be a step ahead and your movement can allow you to do that. A classic example is when you run inside a building and your opponent follows you in. Most players will wait for a right hand peek as your opponent comes in, but if your opponent is good, he'll be ready and anticipating that. 
Now, if we know what he's going to do and where he's going to be looking for us, how can we use our movement to outplay him? My favorite thing to do is to jump up right as you hear him about to open the door, so by the time he does open the door and is ready for you in the corner, you're in midair opposite of where he expects you. This is just a different application of what Nick did. If your opponent expects you to go left, use your movement to outplay him by faking left and going right. If your opponent expects you to be sitting and waiting for a peek, anticipate it by being ready for him being ready for you. My second trick is the most optimal and advanced way to peek with a shotgun. Too often I see people peeking by strafing back and forth or up and down to get a good shot off. This is decent if you're a beginner, but this is the worst way to peek. Why? Because you're covering your body so slowly by moving left or right. What you should be doing is something I've seen Eric Triceps do a lot. You want to cover your body as quickly as possible. In order to do this, instead of strafing and slowly moving back behind the wall, you want to shoot, then crouch, and duck out of the way. This is better for two reasons. It's faster as you're gaining forward momentum by ducking down and forward compared to just slowly moving to the side. And second, by crouching and getting your head out of the way, you're basically becoming a harder target to hit, especially for headshots. This trick works for ramps and cones as well. The slow way again would just be by moving up, taking the shot, and then going back down. With our new movement trick, you peek, then quickly crouch and gain momentum by going to the left or right after you shoot. This is how you should always be peeking with shotguns from now on as you want to get a quick shot off and then duck down before you can get another shot off or switch weapons, all while taking the least damage you can. The next trick is from Destiny's Jesus who you guys probably know if you've been on the Fortnite competitive subreddit so make sure to check him out and I'll leave links to his socials in the description. But the technique is known as crouch swinging. So crouch swinging is when you crouch and move under your opponent to their left and your right in a swinging motion. It seems pretty simple as you're kind of just crouching and moving beneath them to the right, but this is extremely useful when you get into close range SMG or assault rifle fights. Usually you just jump and spray or just sit there and crouch as a stationary target. But with crouch swinging, you're abusing your opponent's character model's FOV. So right here we see that he basically becomes impossible to track because my character model blocks off where he goes, especially when they swing under your character's head. In an SMG trade when he crouch swings, I just can't keep up even though I hit a few headshots as he kind of just disappears under my left side. Even with a high sense, you can't keep track of where he is as he uses your own character's model for cover and disguise. But on the other hand, when they crouch swing to your right, it's not effective at all because your character model doesn't block them at all. This is also very useful in end games and scrims, pop-up cups, and tournaments when you're on low ground. So if you've ever been in this situation, you'll basically have people dropping on top of you from high ground, people coming out of builds, pretty much every angle. Usually you'll have time to get one shotgun shot off, but after that it comes down to you either spraying with your AR or your SMG. This is when you want to use crouch swinging instead of jumping around like a lunatic. To practice this, just go into a game and try to crouch swing whenever you're spraying someone from close range. After you do it a few times and get it down, I guarantee you'll never lose another SMG spray battle again, as long as you don't miss your shots of course. Similar to crouch swinging is what I see Mongrel do a lot, which will be our second to last tip. Any good player like Mongrel in an AR fight will not remain still. This is part of the game sense aspect. It's 10 times harder to hit an opponent who's crouching and strafing side to side than hit someone who's just standing still. And just realize that this goes for pretty much any gunfight you get into, you want to just be as elusive and as hard to hit as you can. If you ever watch a great player like Mongrel just beam someone and take no damage in return without building, well, this is exactly why. He's making himself an erratic and dynamic target. If you don't know what an ENAS is, E-N-A-S, it's a term coined by CDN the Third called the East North American Strafe. If you have no mats and pick a pump shotgun off spawn, the only way to get close to someone with an AR is with an ENAS and when compared to someone running normally, we can see how much harder they are to hit. Obviously, you'll die either way, and the ENAS is more of a meme, but the idea and its relation to game sense is still important. I want to drill this into your head. If you're losing gunfights and hitting your shots, it's because you're too busy trying to hit your shots when you should be crouch spamming and moving left and right to make it as hard as possible for your opponent to hit you. The last tip I have to improve your movement is to stop jumping like a bunny in shotgun fights. Even in decently high pop-up games, I see players jumping around unable to hit each other because both of them are just spamming their space bars or their X button. A good player knows you don't always want to jump in these 50-50 fights because when you jump, a good opponent will be able to tell and track exactly where you're going and where you're going to land. This entire video is about being unpredictable and using your movement and game sense together to take less damage and win more fights. So the last thing we want to do is let our opponents know exactly where we're going to be, and that's what you do by jumping. This is where you should be incorporating crouch spamming, the dynamic peeking and strafing, and crouch swinging to win the gunfight. 
The hardest part about this is practicing enough and being able to use your game sense to know which one is best for the situation. You know, I can give you guys all the tools and how you should be able to think about these things like I have in this episode of Game Sense 101 and in my others, but in the end it kind of comes down to you guys to practice these techniques and to gain enough experience in game to decide which to use. So be sure to check out my other Game Sense 101 videos if you haven't seen them already. If you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications. This video shoutouts go to Real Shalissa, Jack, Doom, Alex Amonson, Diablo, Burn101, Cyraps, Dizzy, Mr. Kiru again, Tyler Morris, Garrett Reed, and Doom, who all use my code, Jerrion in the item shop. Lastly, I'm going to be doing my first ever Twitch stream this Saturday, so be sure to stop by at 1.30pm Eastern Time after my video goes up that day, as I'll definitely be live. Otherwise, that's it from me, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.